While the crocodilians of today are often mislabeled as prehistoric holdovers, the larger group they were a part of, Crocodilia morpha, was far more diverse. Among the most successful crocodilian morphs was Ariripisuchus. Ariripisuchus is not a single species, but a genus consisting of multiple species of small reptiles, all of whom lived during the Cretaceous period. Some of these have been given colorful nicknames, such as dog croc and rat croc. While Ariripisuchus was more closely related to crocodilians than to any other living reptile, it differed from them considerably. It belonged to Nodosuchia, which consisted of generally terrestrial species, and Ariripisuchus was no exception. One of the traits that does make Ariripisuchus exceptional is how it contained six species, which is more than any other Nodosuchian genus. While there were differences between these species, their overall anatomy was largely similar. As Ariripisuchus split from other Nodosuchians early on, the genus provides a window into what the early Nodosuchians were like before they diversified. Like most Nodosuchians, Ariripisuchus had long limbs held in an erect, upright stance, as opposed to the semi-erect stance of their closest living relatives. This gave Ariripisuchus much greater speed on land. None of the species were particularly large, ranging from 1 to 1.8 meters long with Ariripisuchus budetrinensis being the largest known species. Ariripisuchus is thought to have had large eyes given the large orbits in its skull. The most distinguishing trait of the genus from other Nodosuchians is how the edges of the snout bulge outwards, which is most prominent near a pair of large, canine-like teeth. Like many other Nodosuchians, the teeth of Ariripisuchus were heterodont, meaning they had several distinct shapes. This is a contrast to the uniform, conical teeth of crocodilians. While they vary depending on the species, Ariripisuchus' teeth came in three basic shapes. Conical, crocodile-like incisiforms at the front of the jaw, the pair of large caniform teeth in both the upper and lower jaws, and a variety of different teeth behind them that are referred to as post-caniform teeth. These range from lance-shaped teeth to the leaf-shaped teeth of plant eaters. While their teeth were not those of dedicated herbivores, they do suggest an omnivorous diet. As the teeth of the species differed, it seems they filled somewhat different niches. Unfortunately, most of the more rigorous testing is limited to Ariripisuchus gomensi. A study of the teeth of various crocodiliomorphs found the teeth of Ariripisuchus gomensi to be within the range of insectivores and omnivores, with the authors concluding it was a generalist. However, this study was limited to the teeth of a juvenile, and juveniles, including modern crocodilians, sometimes have very different niches from their parents. A finet element analysis of Ariripisuchus gomensi's skull likewise found it had a weak bite force, suggesting it wasn't adapted to hunt large animals, instead preying upon small vertebrates and insects. The largest outlier is rat croc, Ariripisuchus radoides. While none of its actual teeth have been preserved, the first and fourth tooth sockets indicate they were much larger than in other Ariripisuchus species. The tooth sockets suggest the fourth pair of teeth were closer to the size of those of larger carnivores like the Baurusuchids and Periosaurids. The teeth at the front of Ratcroc's jaw also pointed forwards, likely to dig for plants and insects. However, while the teeth of Ariripisuchus were a lot more variable than those of crocodilians, they still paled in comparison to the even more specialized teeth of most other Nodosuchians. One of the traits Ariripisuchus shared with modern crocodilians was their metabolism. Examination of the bone structure of Ariripisuchus and other Nodosuchians has revealed they had an ectothermic or cold-blooded metabolism, relying on their environment for thermoregulation like in modern crocodilians. While this is the norm among modern reptiles, early crocodiliomorphs had a high metabolism, though not as high as modern birds or mammals. A lower metabolism consumes a lot less energy. This means Ariripisuchus would not have needed to consume nearly as much food as its similarly sized, warm-blooded ancestors. However, it also meant it would have been less active and would have grown at a much slower rate than mammals or dinosaurs. Therefore, while today's omnivorous mammals may provide an analog for Ariripisuchus' diet, in many other ways, monitor lizards provide a better indication of its activity level. 
Like many other crocodiliomorphs, Aeroripisuchus possessed osteoderms, which are bony plates on the skin. Aeroripisuchus's osteoderms were arranged into multiple rows across the back, tail, and belly. In addition to providing protection, the osteoderms of modern crocodilians are vascularized to aid in heat exchange. However, like those of their more active ancestors, the osteoderms of Aeroripisuchus were thinner, lacking the vascularization critical to heat exchange in modern crocodilian osteoderms. This shows that even though Aeroripisuchus already had a low metabolism, it took time for crocodiliomorphs to optimize their anatomy for an ectothermic lifestyle. All the locations Aeroripisuchus fossils have been found in were formerly part of the supercontinent Gondwana, which was formed from what are now the southern continents. The oldest species were Aeroripisuchus gomensi and an unnamed species nicknamed the Cradoform, both of which lived in South America 115 to 108 million years ago. Aeroripisuchus winogari, the dog croc, whose nickname is derived from its soft, dog-like nose, lived around 112 million years ago. Its fossils are found in what is now North Africa and the Elras Formation. Aeroripisuchus patagonensis and Aeroripisuchus budotrinensis are both from the Candelero Formation in Argentina, which was formed between 99 to 97 million years ago. At roughly the same time, Aeroripisuchus rhodoides, the rat croc, lived in North Africa. Its fossils are found in the famous Chemchem beds, which contain fossils of many famous species, including the iconic dinosaur Spinosaurus. The last known species of Aeroripisuchus is Aeroripisuchus tisangoxagia, who lived in Madagascar not long before the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs and most of the other Nodosuchians 66 million years ago. Aeroripisuchus tisangoxagia extends the range of the genus to about 40 to 50 million years, an exceptional amount of time for a single genus to survive. Even among crocodilians, who are often mislabeled living fossils, no genus has lasted so long. However, examination of Aeroripisuchus's closest relatives indicates the genus didn't suffer from evolutionary stasis. Aeroripisuchus belongs to the clade Uruguayasuchidae. The namesake of the clade, the South American Uruguayasuchus, consists of two species that were not that different from Aeroripisuchus. However, the third and final genus in Uruguayasuchidae, the African Anatosuchus, was very much an outlier. Anatosuchus had a broad, duck-like snout, for which it has been nicknamed Duck Croc, though it is thought to have been more of a heron analog. Notably, some papers have found it nested within Aeroripisuchus, suggesting that Anatosuchus is descended from a species of Aeroripisuchus. If so, some members of Aeroripisuchus not only changed enough to warrant a new genus, but evolved in a very unusual direction. It has also been suggested that Rat Croc may deserve its own genus as well. Regardless, other descendants of Aeroripisuchus changed so little they remained within the genus for an extraordinary length of time. In conclusion, Aeroripisuchus's basic body plan was both long-lasting, but also capable of evolving in surprising ways. The survival of at least one species of Aeroripisuchus into the very end of the Cretaceous period suggests it took a meteor to finally bring about the extinction of this enduring reptile. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.